My name's Imogen Grant. Um, I'm a member of Grassroots, um, the Grassroots Collective on campus and the Greens, and I'm running under Switch. Okay. Um, and what colour are you running on with Switch? Uh, I'm running on yellow. Um, so why do you run, why do you want to run the SRC, uh, given it struggles to reach quorum regularly at SRC meetings? Um, and how would you seek to rectify this? Okay. Um, well, I think something that we can all sort of sympathize with is, yeah, like the hack cycle within the SRC. And when you mention never making quorum, I think that's the, the perfect example of that, which is people get into it um, just for fame or as a stepping board um, for some sort of union job or as a staffer. Um, and I'm not about that. Um, I really do love this union. And, um, and I, yeah, and I'd hope that I would lead the sort of student union that would be a fighting one, a left wing one, and that would actually like cooperate and work with its staff members and with its office bearer team and with its counsellors. Um, that point particularly about quorum though, um, if you have an active president that really like has relationships with its counsellors, if you, like I mean, I think a real, an example of that is we have a whole heap of ex officio members of council that probably don't even know they're members of the undergraduate council. So if you, if you have a president that actually reaches out to these people, forges relationships with them, make sure office bearers attend and give reports, make sure like, you know, in, encourages their campaigns to run. You actually create a very different kind of SRC to the one that we currently have. Um, and that's the sort of democratic sort of, um, yeah, the collaborative SRC that I would be interested in running. So you think that a lot of the SRC's current problems stem back to the, its current president in that, in this field that we're discussing, like in terms of attendance yeah. and engagement? Well, it's, it's not specific to Isabella at all. I think there's been a trend in how the SRC has run, which is um, the president doesn't particularly engage with its office bearer team. Um, it doesn't particularly push their, or like contribute ideas with their office bearers and, and um, you know, help them run campaigns. Um, I think an, another example of that is, um, you know, we should be encouraging student participation in academic board meetings. And a part of that is sort of the, the president should be convening meetings before every academic board meeting with each student representative so that they feel confident contributing to these meetings and confident um, speaking to particular motions. And these are really simple things that could happen. And they're actually just a question of sort of determination more than anything that's intrinsic to the role at all. Um, so yeah. I think that's change in how you run the organisation, really. Um, sorry, just to touch on a note that you made earlier about ex officio members. Um, by that you mean uh, like uh, student faculty representatives, mm -hmm. is that yeah. right? And how would you envisage them being incorporated into the SRC's current structure? Yeah, well, they are currently incorporated into the SRC structure. So mm -hmm. we do have a faculties and societies committee in the SRC. Um, but to the best of my knowledge, that isn't currently active. So I think the most simple way that a president can engage with these, with these people is by making sure that committee is active. And that's also one of the perfect ways for the president to actually be in tune to what student issues are in each faculty. I mean, it's amazing that one would come to an academic board meeting, but not have, you know, not have built these relationships with faculty representatives um, you know, from the science committee, from from the con and all the like. So, um, so that would probably be one of the first, the first and most simple things, really. And um, do you support the? I mean, I know how you're going to answer this, but do you support the SRC going on strike in solidarity with staff? Particularly, what do you think yeah. that achieves, given that the uni doesn't really care whether the SRC gets involved or not? Okay. Um, well, I know it's a slogan that's thrown around a lot, but it actually means a lot and that's that staff working conditions are student learning conditions and um, when staff are overworked, when they're not able to take sick leave, um, as students this creates bad learning outcomes for us. We get you know, uh, poor um, feedback on our assessments, our lectures and tutorials are overpacked um, and this is some of the stuff that, um, that the EBA negotiations with the staff are touching on. So it's really important that as students, we do everything we can 
to not undermine their negotiations, to not undermine their strike, and make sure they're as successful as possible. Um, because we are one of the major stakeholders in who, who benefit from a successful um, EBA negotiation from the NTU side. So um, yeah, it's absolutely critical that that the, the student union get behind that. And um, in addition to that, like the the SRC sort of first and foremost is is an activist union. It's a student union, and it fights in service of students. So you know, both from the collective side, but also from the sort of frontline services it provides. So, I mean, the SRC would be shooting itself in the foot if it wasn't at the front line um, of the strikes. Yeah. Um, if you had to cut $50,000 from the SRC budget, yeah. hypothetically, where would you cut that from? And what would you do differently to your predecessor, Isabella? Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are two separate questions? Oh, sorry, that is actually meant to be. Two separate questions. <laughs> uh, so the first question, so the first question yeah. was, if you had to cut $50,000 from the SRC budget, where would you cut that from? Okay. Um, that's a really terrible situation for any president to be in. Um, so I hope there would be steps, like many steps before the SRC would ever be put into that situation. Um, I guess sort of the obvious answer is that we have an obligation to our staff and I would not be cutting money from their wages um, at all. So that's just not something that would ever be touched. So the only other places with really sort of variable ex expenditure within the SRC budget would be within collectives and NUS. So I guess the first thing you would probably cut would be things like um, uh, NUS travel subsidies for non-delegates. You might be able to save up to $18,000 from that. Maybe you would then go into uh, collective publications because that's slightly separate to the frontline activism they do. Um, but from there, you're really probably looking at um, NUS affiliation and collective budgets, unfortunately. But you know, there's still room for yeah for manoeuvre a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I might save that that question that. Anne was flagging mm -hmm. before until a bit later now. It's yeah. not really a surprise, so let's move on. Um, so if Oni were to criticise a factional ally of yours or a friend or mm -hmm. even yourself, uh, what do you think your role as DSP is in that situation? How would you respond? Okay. Um, well, your role as DSP is to make sure that um, nothing that Oni publishes could open the SRC up to a lawsuit, let's say defamation or or any law that could be brought against us. So if your role as DSP is really confined to that, absolutely. And people elect on the editorial teams with a particular vision. You need to sort of respect on his autonomy when it comes to publishing what they like to publish. Um, and unless it's, unless it's within the realm of defamation, then there's absolutely nothing that, you know, a DSP should comment on, you know, and, and in addition to that, you shouldn't give your friends sort of tip offs that they're about to receive public criticism because I, that breaks as well some of the rules of being a DSP. Um, so if I was ever presented with that situation, um, I mean, it's unfortunate, criticism is not nice, but um, but yeah, you, you do your job and you do your job effectively. And if it doesn't open the SRC up to a lawsuit, then it's none of my business. Um. Do you think that you're more experienced than the two people that you're running against and why? Okay. Or why not? Yeah. Um, I, know, I I have a lot of respect for, for Bella and, um, you know, we see each other a lot in the OB room. Um, and, you know, but I, I think I'm a sort of, you know, a, a slightly different candidate to them on, you know, on the grounds that, sort of through this year as women's officer, I have really considerable experience both within activism and within student representation. So, you know, on the activism side, you know, I was sort of at the forefront of organising sort of the New South Wales sort of response to the Human Rights Commission report and organising that enormous cross-campus rally that we had. Um, if it wasn't for the pushing that I've done in the Safe Communities Advisory Group, we wouldn't be seeing stuff like training for staff being rolled out. Um, so I'm quite uniquely positioned in having both like 
very considerable experience within both activism and with like sort of student committees, lobbying management, all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and I think that this is the activism which actually a president needs. Um, you know, I, I, you can put the best person in the room, but at the end of the day, change isn't going to happen unless you have students organising. So you need a president who's able to facilitate collective office bearers to be able to run the best campaigns they possibly can do. And you know, this year I've gained considerable experience with sort of working with the media and how do you get your public campaigns sort of broadcasted. And those are also skills that I can share with collective OBs as well. So how do you run a sort of special considerations or a disabilities campaign that gets media coverage? And it's really about sort of facilitating the SRC staff, who also include the student office bearers, into doing the best job that they can for students. And I think I'm really well positioned to do that. Cool. Uh, I think we'll move on to some of the more specific mm -hmm. uh, uh, questions for your campaign. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think the purpose of the SRC and the SRC president is? Okay. Um, so can you repeat that question? Yeah, sure. So, so what do you think the purpose of the SRC mm -hmm. is, and yeah. what the perp like what what is the purpose of the SRC president's role? Perfect. Yeah. Um, so, the SRC as an organisation, um, first and foremost, is a student union, and that sort of splits into two sections. So, on one hand, one of the most important things the SRC does is the student activism, and it's the students who organise sort of at the front line of particular crises whether or not that be the environmental crisis, sort of sexual assault endemic, and that's the really important work that the SRC does. On the other hand, the SRC, and it's a sort of different side of student advocacy, is the sort of frontline services it provides for students in need. So on both sides of the spectrum, the SRC is an organisation that functions in service of students. Um, specifically to the president, um, I would see my role as one that sort of makes that happen to the best degree possible. So if that would be, you know, finding ways to expand the SRC legal service and make its frontline services the best they can be, or, um, you know, running particular campaigns. I think they're one and the same thing for the president. And I'd also say, sort of going on to that, where sort of the president's role might get a bit bureaucratic, let's say, so on the committees it sits on or the um, that actually dovetails really well with the activism work that the collective OBs do because it's without the collective OBs functioning and doing their work incredibly, you actually don't see management making any concessions um, in the committees. So it's really about the president facilitating the organisation running as best as it can. You're doing a great job. Um, I'm just going to say, you're obviously very passionate. I just that, that, that last, yeah. you had a bit of microphone um, gesticulation there, so oh, you can just hold yeah. the microphone. Yeah, you're that's good all though. good. It's yeah. all good. Yeah, it's all good. Um, no, sorry about that. I guess it's like no, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Think, yeah. Um, is so uh, you mentioned that uh, free education is something that you wanted to fight for in yeah. the policy statement, I believe. Um, do you think that this is a realistic goal and do you think that it's a, a goal that's useful to propose? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think that any, any president of a student union should be fighting for free education. Um, we've had it before and it's not an impossibility that students will organise and we'll achieve it again. Um, and we really need to be optimistic and, and you know, quite maximal in our demands, I think. Otherwise, we're not going to achieve any of them. Um, and I'd also add on to that, that fighting for free education is in the job description for the ed officer. I think it would be particularly horrific if the president of the student union had a different stance on education funding than, you know, one of the main office bearers in their organisation. Um, so it really is something that's quite enshrined into the values um, of the SRC. Cool. Uh, the SRC already has several collectives and yeah. funds some of them more than those collectives can spend and more that the SRC can probably afford going into the future, to be honest. Yeah. Um, how will you further boost the collectives so they're making like effective use of the means they're given? And yeah. do you think that every collective that the SRC currently has 
should be kept and is necessary? So it's a two-part question. Yeah. All right. I'm going to reflect on that for a second. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, hmm. Sorry, am I doing a Tony Abbott? No, <laughs> no, you're no, fine. No. Yeah. You're cool. You're cool. Don't worry. We'll, um, we'll. You no, no, think no. We're not going to like put that in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. If you need the question again, just let us know. Yep. Oh, actually, no, if you can do it again, because it was like a three part. That's absolutely sort of fine. Yeah. yeah. So, how will you further boost the collectives yep. to make effective use of the means they have? Yeah. And do you think that every collective the SRC has Perfect. is necessary and should continue? Okay. Um, I think, okay. Well, I think what one of the things you're referencing in your question um, is that some of the collectives as they exist on campus um, are not running to their full potential, but that does not have to be the case. When it like when collectives put through their budget applications, you know, often the consultation with the president or the consultation with the general secretaries sort of ends there, um, and. And that shouldn't be the case. Um, so with sort of smaller collectives like um, like the Indigenous Collective or the Disability and Carers Collective, there's so many incredible campaigns that could be coming out of the SRC and coming out of those collectives specifically. And as you said, the money is there for them and it's actually just a matter of making sure that the people in those positions lead the way and run incredible campaigns. And sort of one of the things that we've been interested in from grassroots is by implementing is implementing stipend reform. So that's about making sure that the people that get into these office bearer positions actually do the work that they're supposed to be doing. So it's not just about you know, you'd introduce timesheets, you'd you know you'd cap it as a stipend, but you'd actually have to prove that you're doing a particular amount of workload to receive your to receive your stipend to receive the money. Um, and this would, as a result, sort of force collectives to become active. For, you know, you can redistribute the funds as well. So some of the smaller OBs who are currently not paid, um, you'd be able to introduce sort of small stipends for them as well. Um, and as a result, you'd see that collective OBs sort of who before may not have committed time to organising because they've got part-time work, they've got a lot of other stuff going on in their life, will suddenly be able to sort of resource the activism that they've always wanted to do. Um, and leading on from that, um, like specifically about stipend reform and how you can sort of boost collectives, is I think the, the mental health sort of of the office bearers is particularly poor in the SRC. Um, sort of many people get hospitalised due to mental health issues every year. We're probably looking at, you know, nearly one attempted suicide per year in the OB team. Um, if office bearers are remunerated for their labour, um, it's actually also, it's a lot easier for people to draw lines and draw distinctions between what's work time, what's study time, what's free time. Um, a lot more so relative to it being a volunteer role. Yeah. I love that. That sounded like, prim like you know, in primary school or like high school and they're like, Work time, study time. Yeah. I just felt so calm. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, you talk about wanting a better deal for international students. Um, how do you plan on achieving this? Uh, and there will be a follow up to this after you answer this question oh, as yes. well. Beautiful. Um, well, I don't think I'm particularly best placed to speak to international student issues. Um, but if we were to think of some, they'd probably be around a living wage, around student housing, around um, sort of, you know, your academic rights at the university, around sexual assault. Um, and one of the things we see from that is that none of them are particularly specific to international students. Um, they're all issues that, that we all experience. Um, but international students um, tend to be especially exploited. Um, so when I talk about having sort of international student representation in the campaigns we run. It's actually about collaborating with these communities, collaborating with the office bearers, as I've spoken about before, 
and making sure that their voices and their experiences are present in these campaigns about, I don't know, about special cons, about student housing and the like. Okay. Uh, does Switch have any international students running as part of the brand? Uh, yes, we do. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so we've had, woke up, sorry, um, Women's Collective has been <laughs> fighting for a dedicated sexual assault solicitor for some time, yeah. but couldn't get enough money in this current staff negotiation. Yeah. Uh, what makes you think that you'll be able to implement an SRC sexual assault um, solicitor as yeah. president? Okay. Um, yeah, so just to sort of explain some of the processes we went through there, um, when it came through that that we didn't receive enough of a staff increase to pay for a solicitor. We looked into other funding measures. We looked into, um, you know, pro bono work from major law firms. If law firms could donate resources, um, we looked into the Redfern Legal Center and the Women's Legal Service to see if we could start up a contract with them, similar to the one that Supra has um, with the Redfern Legal Service. But what we know is that, um, you know. CLCs are incredibly, you know, um, underfunded and they don't have the capacity to provide that support for the SRC. So it is true that the only, and you could never, sorry, you could never hire someone on a six month contract without a reassurance that you would have the funding to, you know, rehire them. So it is only through staff funding that we would be able to expand the SRC legal service. Um, I think we are politically in a different situation now than when we were at the beginning of the year when we were putting through our SAF proposal. So this year I have been fighting really hard, saying, yeah, management needs to train the CAP staff. We need to train the staff in responding to disclosures, but also as the SRC, we need to expand our legal service to make sure that we can provide specialist resources to students that come through our doors. And I think that point has been made to management in a way that it was not made at the start of the year. And I think there will be I think it is overwhelmingly the case that that is a project that will likely be resourced through SAF if we continue on as the Women's Collective pushing for it, as we will, um, up until next year's sort of SAF proposal. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Um, I might come back to this. Hmm? I might oh, yeah, to sure. <laughs> um, just touching on. So you mentioned that the collectives, for example, that you're hoping to have um, to implement some kind of stipend reform. Yeah. Um, in relation to you, your own potential like role as president, yeah. uh, how much time would you spend in that role? Okay. And yeah, yeah. would you implement similar things, for example? Well, yeah, as, as president, one of the things I'd be interested in pushing is stipend reform. Um, and if that is successful, that would involve a pay cut from my salary, which would be redistributed to um, to other collective OBs who are currently unpaid. Um, but one of the things I'd hope would get out of that is maybe then I would be doing less hours in the SRC, but you'd also be having collective OBs doing a lot more work. So you actually sort of redistribute the work quite a bit. If that doesn't pass, it's very simple. Um, you're paid with student money, um, you are paid minimum wage full time and you commit to those hours as a result. Um, and I'd also say an unfortunate thing about the SRC is a lot of the OBs do work a lot. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if I would continue my normal full time hours despite a pay cut. But, um, but yeah, I 100% I think that stipend reform is a, one of the structural reforms that we need in the SRC for it to sort of grow into the active institution that we need right now. We have far too many office bearers who, um, whose work either isn't, um, they either cannot afford to do it because they're not remunerated or they do shit all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and just uh, a question that springs partly from personal interest as well. Yeah. Would this apply to the only editors? No, it wouldn't. It's um, just the president and the office bearer team. Right. Yeah. Uh, one of your fellow candidates, Brendan Ma, is uh, suggesting he would take a pay cut to give $5,000 of textbook funding to students, um, like for people who, who can't afford uh, textbooks. Okay. Why do you think that lobbying the library would be a better idea? Yeah. 
I'm a bit confused as to why Brendan Ma thinks that $5,000 would drastically change the welfare of students, considering textbooks are so expensive, $5,000 actually doesn't cover many units um, in a lot of cases. Um, the university, when, when Kyle ran, he also ran on a similar policy, and the university's made, made a commitment to providing all textbooks in the two-hour zone, and yet yeah, they've publicly made that commitment. Um, so it's actually a matter of holding them up to that. Um, it's, it's a very reasonable goal that students should not be given, like the students essentially should not be penalised to, yeah, to study at a university. Essentially a service that we all actually pay for as well, that would be given, you know, additional punitive measures to accessing an education. Um, yeah, I'm very confused as to why Brennan Ma thinks $5,000 will drastically <laughs> influence the welfare of students. But yeah, you can go ahead with that. And a final question. Um, would you work with the Liberals at Repselect? Absolutely not. Um, yeah, the, I don't think the Liberals have, have anything good to contribute to the SRC. And um, yeah, and it's, it's actually an incredible disappointment that, um, that yeah, we have a history, of, of, that there's a history of, of, yeah, I don't know, factional deals being made with them. Yeah, I'd never work with them. It's good right. to have on record. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Imogen, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Oof. All right.